Wait. This isn't right. Duh. Okay, Marmu! Marmu's got a refreshing attitude towards life. She says, I'm gonna curl up into a ball, throw myself at my problems, and I'm not gonna stop until one of us is dead. I love it. Very carpe diem. Unlike every other dream warrior, she doesn't change up her strategy at all as her health gets lower, which one would think makes her the simplest of them, but... well... Her soul attack is the catapult. She'll curl herself up into a ball and launch herself at the night, bouncing off surfaces, being highly susceptible to nail knockback, and basically careening all over the dang place. Here's the problem. This attack's physics are downright volatile. Bouncing off surfaces often increases her momentum, and though the angles that she bounces at make sense in a vacuum, she also does her darndest job to keep homing in on you, and if you are moving at all, then good luck predicting her movement. So basically, the key to victory here is to not play her game. You want to move as little as possible and focus only on timing your attacks to bat her away when she comes close. Better yet, wedge yourself in a corner and you'll cut off many of the angles she's even capable of approaching you from. Now it's basically just a good old fashioned tennis match. So bring it on, Marmu. Let me show you why they call it match point. Marmo's HP is set at a very strange figure, 416, and once again, we are just going to hide in the corner and wail on her from here. Now, I'm very excited to get to the subsequent fights on this, because as I understand it, she is considered pretty threatening. But honestly, there's even with all the any other tools that we have gotten since our first fight against her, which are not too many. That is going to be a, the main strategy. But things get mixed up quite a bit once we get into Ascended. The arena is much smaller, shorter as well, and covered in thorns on the edge. This makes it pretty much impossible to tuck ourselves in the corner as we did before. So in order to essentially do at least a similar strategy, we are going to need to jump into all of our... Ooh, yikes! jump into each of our slashes in order to counteract the knockback that we get from striking her. Additionally, try your best to never strike upwards, because the lower ceiling is going to make her bounce back down way faster. Alright, I did take two hits there, but that did go pretty smoothly. Let's see how it goes on Radiant. This is probably the best fight to use Grubberfly's Elegy on. The increased range that you get from the sword slashes are much, much, much more useful here than I think they are in any other fight. Overall, it's not too difficult to just keep knocking her away, even without that. But if you are struggling, you can shoot! <laughs> you can shoot, yes. Uh, then it is an option. Back into the thick of things, into the thick of it, into the thick of it. It's whenever, so everything about her, as I said before, is very, very random. If she starts launching at you from up or down like that, it can make the otherwise very simple strategy uh, a little bit more difficult. But I have, uh, I have no problem saying that her perceived difficulty in the larger fandom is pretty overblown. I think one of the biggest factors in the struggle of taking her down is that you don't really have time to use spells, which are otherwise going to be one of your biggest time savers against any bosses, especially one that has as little HP as she does. 600 is not a whole lot, but as long as you stay calm, stay focused, yes sir, we can just about handle this. And that's all there is to it. Alright, only one more Dream Warrior left to Blitz, and <laughs> we'll get to him later. Next up, we're sticking in the Queen's Gardens and taking on the Traitor Lord.